On today's tutorial video, we'll be making cemeteries under glass. Now, what goth out there would not want to have one of these on your desk? So let me now explain. Today, you'll be needing these things. You'll be needing a dome. You can get any of these usually at a dollar store now with something else inside of it. You will also be needing three types of acrylic paints, a black, a white, and a burnt umber two types of soft brushes, a hot glue gun, some air dry clay, H.O. size tree, and spatula, a pair of scissors, one sheet of A4 paper, and some flocking. You may also want to invest in some good pair of tweezers to establish and build this type of material, and also some white glue. Other than that, the rest of it is in the tutorial. Let me jump right in. This would be cool to put a, like, a full body skeleton in. That would be kind of cool. I don't even know how to even open that, even if I wanted to. But oh, maybe it popped off. But these two, I have a choice between this one and this one. And I also have today, these are... Toy train, like, HO size, I think, or what scale is this? 100 to 1? I have no idea what this size is, but I've got these mini trees. I also have this uh, color diorama modeling landscape something or other. And then I also have this little fence. Now, wouldn't it be really cool to put your own like miniature cemetery inside of here and have some trees and some tiny stones how goth is that <laughs> so what happened was i had used these pliers and i just grabbed the cactus that were on there and they came out like a dream like boom 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 the problem is that they used at the factory some kind of polysynthetic resin mixed like an epoxy mixed with this stone. Now, I did crumble a little bit out at the beginning, which kind of shaped it. I'm going to show you like what it what it does here. It just the stones do come out. But the problem is it takes a lot of work. However, on the second thought is that's already pre-mounded up for me which is really cool. So what we're gonna to do today is, instead of me putting styrofoam in there to build it up, I'm just gonna build right over this. This is what we call uh, prop maker's luck. <laughs> so I'm gonna use my, uh, my, my resin clay and I'm gonna pile it up on here. So let's do that right now. So with this, you can use any color you want. I am just, I just so happen to have this yellow here and what we're gonna do is using this we're just gonna coat the whole entire area with a nice big gloppy mound of clay this is gonna look great because I was like oh, I mean why didn't I think of this before we want the cemetery to have that kind of a mounded mounded look because we're going to be putting the the tree in here now while we have the the clay and it's still wet we get to put a lot of texture in there too now you gotta remember we're going to be coating this over with the railway train um railroad train fluff that we have I purchased some railway railroad fluff got to make sure it gets all in there all right, that is so cool. Look at that, all gone. We've got a nice, beautiful mound going on here. Now let's see how well our tree is going to work in there. Ooh, hey, we got two of them in there. Maybe I can fuse them together. Let's see how this is going to look. Oh, man, look at that. Put that tree right in there and make sure that that dome fits beautifully look at that dang right over it i actually think i'm just going to stick with the one tree i may be using 
uh, some pieces of this tree over here for more shrubbery and stuff. And then you also have to remember that I have the gate to put in there. But right now, let's put this tree in here and then let this dry for 24 hours. The next part we're going to be doing today, uh, while our tree is setting up, drying and stuff, we have 24 hours. Let's look at this gate and try to make it as gothic as possible. The first thing is that um, we're going to inspect the gate holding device here. I have got out some acrylic 600 white, some 999 black, and my absolute favorite of all of my acrylic colors is 624 burnt umber. And I also have a small container of water today, and we're going to be making a slurry today of white. Like I said, well, the fence is already white. We don't want it white. We want this gothic rod iron. And we're going to be working a little bit of our 999 black until we have what's going to look like kind of a poured iron look over here. We really want that poured iron look. That's getting there. No, it's going to be darker. You can see as I'm working the black into the white, and I'm working on a piece of typing paper, um, using different types of palettes is one thing, but the typing paper absorbs a lot of the water and keeps it nice and thick for me. Here I am using a number six watercolor brush, even though I should be using an acrylic, but I need these nice soft bristles to coat everything. Let me get my very special pair of tweezers over here. Look and see how I'm doing this. Coating this very nicely. Just making sure I get everything coated. Once you get this coated, all you need to do is run this under a hair dryer and it will be instantly dry. You can see we've aged this beautifully. I'm um, absorbing the wet areas into the dry. That looks really cool. Now today we're going to be using another wash. You can see I've already stained the the gates, this beautiful cast iron gray which we mixed up and I'm going in with my brush today here into a slurry of burnt umber as I had said before as using a, a medium to actually age things so I have to hold these with tweezers very carefully just enough to do a coat If you look very, very carefully, one of the spines are missing in the center right here on the gate. So I really love it. It adds, it adds that kind of antique, worn, uh, you know, through the years type of things, falling down and breaking down type of essence that we're looking for. Now I get you a um, very, very close up view of what these posts look like and the gates. I want to show you now what the burnt umber does. It creates rust on them. This very, very, very minute detail most people would not even care about, wouldn't even like bother with, but if you're a model maker, things like these are very important. So that is how you would make rust on an iron gate. And you can see this is turn rock hard. Now, that tree is in there very well and looks really great. Today we get to do some plastic surgery today, so if you have any types of cracks or anything in your clay, it's no problem. You're just going to be using a, another glue stick. I got my glue gun heating up. Today I'm using white glue and I also got the flocking over here for the diorama, uh, the grass for the materials. So we're going to do all this today, so let's go close-up of now of what I'm doing. I'm injecting the hot glue into the areas where the clay has cracked 
which is no problem. Anything you want smoothed out can be really done. And just use the tip of your glue gun to smooth that around. You're not going to see it because it's going to be under uh, the flocking. Be careful with the tree, too. You don't want to hit that. Uh, and once you get this done, maybe you're going to like it just the way it looks. You know, this is just filling in. And the reason why we're using a glue gun is this is just instantly healing. I've got some masking tape now because I want to keep uh, the edges really clean of what we're doing. So I'm going to be taking masking tape and applying masking tape all the way around the base of our cemetery here to keep that nice and clean. So let's put the masking tape on here and then I'll show you what it's going to look like. What I'm doing now is I'm applying glue. I'm taking glue right out of the bottle and applying it to the surface. What happened was I didn't have enough glue. And you know what? Basically, in prop making, you're going to run out of something eventually. So this is just a good time to talk about it. But now I'm applying the glue very generously to our base. And we're going to, after... We get this all nice and gummed up. We're going to apply our flocking to it. We're going to apply. We're just going to start sprinkling that right on there. It's kind of like making, uh, what's that, cupcakes or something. Don't be afraid. Just very, very generously stack it on there. And if there's any just bald spots afterwards, you just re-glue and reflock. I think, honestly, we're going to need another coat. So let's do that. Let's let this dry and we'll do another coat. Okay, so now we're going to be doing our second flocking. We're going to be adding our glue again and then we're going to be spreading that around a generous amount. I'm just going to put it right on there. Uh, it doesn't matter what you're working on. Um, if you're working on say trains or anything, um, small miniature material takes takes time. That's basically it. And you can see this is going to be kind of a soaking right in but I'm going to apply all this glue again to the surface and then I'm going to do another flocking. So let's do that now. The old saying goes twice as a charm. Now we get to take off the tape and see what all this looks like. So let's take off the tape now and I'll show you what it looks like when we're finished. There it is. Now you know what I have to say about this? The absolute hardest part about doing this was the cleanup. Basically, you have the little particles everywhere. That was the hardest part. Other than that, look at that. You know, gorgeous lawn underneath a tree. Who knows? Maybe you like it just like it is. Maybe you're a nature lover and you just, or, you know, you want to hug a tree. And uh, maybe you just want to put a little tiny tree under a dome. Let's see what that's going to look like. Look at that. Look at that. I got a little bit of paint on there. I'll take that off later. But I mean, look at that. A little tree under a dome. But, who knows? So our next part is we got to let this dry completely and we're going to work now on our tombstones. Let's go. So what I'm doing right now is I am coming up with some drawings of some tombstones that I would like to put in my miniature graveyard. And some of these, like this one over here, is a New England style. A lot of these are from the 1600s. And some of the rounded pieces like this are from the 1800s. And of course, this is very Victorian. A more modern piece would be the flat stone. And even more flatter than that would be a piece that goes right into the ground. However, all of these seem essential to be put in our miniature cemetery. So now that we have some drawings of what we want the cemetery stones to look like, let's get some air clay and start making some. Are you ready? I'm just going to rip into this right here. Oh, look at that. We got white today. This is pretty good. Um, maybe we're just using a air dry clay over here. And we have to look at the size of our model first, which is right here. 
And then by guesstimating the size of the tombstones that we want, we're going to be able to put them in there. Because remember that we are working on a certain scale model size. Now, when you're working with trains, there's different sizes. There's HO, and they've got a little itty bitty one called a Z, but there's different sizes. And for our tree right here, I think right now this is in the HO scale. So I'm going to be making some tombstones that are approximately the same size as the tree. First of all, I'm going to be using several, several different types of tools here. I have myself a spatula to crop off and chop off some of the clay. We don't want them very thick. However, we do want to have some edges, some roundedness to a few of them. So I'm going to be making up some sides over here. Like this. Once you get your tombstones to the approximate size that you want them, you're going to let them air dry overnight. Using, actually, I mean, you see I'm using the spatula to create a blade here. And we're going to shape this now to create a tiny tombstone. If you have a Q-tip like this, you can very, very easily break this type of wood to create a support structure which will go inside of, say, a tombstone like this one right here. You need a support sometimes because using an air dry clay, they will just fall right over. But if you have some type of support inside of that, that will dry quite nicely. Now what I have here is I've made up some tombstones. I've used two types of spatulas to move the clay around on paper. And I also have this very special pair of tweezers. Now I have a whole plethora of different types of tweezers that I've collected over the years from different places. This is just a sample of the ones I have. I have so many different types of tweezers. And the one thing is that you can never have enough of these supplies uh, when you're a prop maker today, I mean this is this is ultra ultra fine over here. Um, but today, what I'm using over here is a basically a crafts maker's uh, clock or watch maker's type of tweezer. And this one I am using to place. I'm going to show you very up close what I'm doing. Got some magnification going on here. I am using the tweezers to create words just by very very easily tapping, holding it together, and spreading it slightly apart, it's going to create a texture on the stone that's going to make it look like this word. So when we place a wash over that in the aging process, it's going to look really cool. A very important thing to make is different sized stones, and then we're going to let them dry overnight. Now this is a fraction of the ones that I'm going to be making. I'll probably do about two or three more sheets like this and then I'll paint them and then assemble them and see which ones I like and which ones uh, work or not work. Uh, here we have pieces for a base and our larger piece which would go over here, the column style. And then when it's done we can assemble that with a bit of glue. These have dried a full 24 hours. Look at that, they're stuck right to the paper. Oh, one popped off. But we're going to be very, very carefully peeling them off. If they don't come off, we can cut them out and soak them. There's two different ways. Nope, that pops right off beautifully. And here's our little lineup. All of these stones that are over here will just be placed right in our uh, fake grass and these need to be assembled um, that one goes over here but here we have our one that needs to be assembled with our three pieces okay it'll be our largest stone okay and I'll put this one over here but all of these we need to put the foot stone on there first let's get our hot glue gun if you need to in any type of trimming or getting them level so they go on there. You can do that just with a pair of scissors because this clay cuts very easily. So once we get these assembled, then we can start painting them.
So now we have these little guys over here, and we put our tombstones together. Those will look great. You know what these remind me of? These remind me of the, the ones that are in the Disney Haunted House, if you've ever been through the ride. Okay, now let's mix up the appropriate colors in acrylic paints and paint them and age them. Today I'm going to be using my stainless steel larges over here uh, just to hold the piece and to paint them. These are from Pakistan. And then we're going to be mixing up today a mixture of about three parts white to one part black. And if you're wondering what the colors I'm using over here, I'm using a 600 white shield acrylic and I'm also using a 999 black which is also an oh this is an, this is alpha color so they mix together quite nicely so let's do that right now okay and i'm mixing today i'm using a number six hua huang over here this is a large acrylic or a watercolor brush i'm going to be putting down my water first i mean taking into account my my white and then i'm going to just use a very small dot of wow. Okay, we want this a lot lighter than this, I think. Um, put a little bit more white to that. Because what we're going to do is we're going to age these. And we want just a very... The first coat you really want to have as like a primer. So that's basically the color we want right there. We're going to mix up a lot of it. And we're not going to be using a large brush to paint these today. We're going to be using a very very small one over here. What number is this? I think this is a number. This is number one and it's a Da Vinci. It's a 500 series and we'll be using this to paint our stones. So what we're going to do is I'll start painting these and show you what they look like. They look really great and one of the things we need to do now is we need to create a wash to put on that. So I'm using uh, about a half an inch or an inch um, brush over here. This is what number is this one? Number six. It's also a Hua Yang. And I'm going to be using our black that was left over. Oh, my little tum tums fell over. We're going to be using the black that was left over from our original painting. We want it a slurry enough that once we apply it, it's going to start aging the stones. No, we want more black than this. We want the black to pool into all the little crevices that we used and the little divots and stuff. Don't be afraid to put this on because it will eventually dry off quite nicely. It wanted to see it's going into all the little the little cracks there. Let me do this tombstone and demonstrate what this is gonna look like. You can see this. Look at that. It, it just pulls right in all the little here you can see the marks that I had made with the tweezers earlier demonstrating that. So I'm going to do that now to all the stones. I'm using a large brush on this one. It really brings out the detail. I'm going to get a close up of that so you can see it. There you can see it much, 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 much better. Right there. You see all the detail that starts coming out. And that's what we want. So we're going to do all the rest of them and see how they look. The teeny tiny world that you are creating will look really great once you get your aging process on there. These came out really, really cool. I love the way they look. Now we're going to pick out which cemetery stones we want to put in our tiny diorama. I love how this one came out. Okay, let's go. One of the important things to do is to actually measure now you may not be able to use all the stones that you make because of size differences. So just because it looks good doesn't actually mean that it's going to work. Now this stone I really, really do like. And if I put it over here, I don't know if it's size appropriate. However, by using one of the little stones, the more tinier stones that I had made, it makes the tree look a lot bigger. That looks and feels a little bit more appropriate. So what we have to do now is choose which stones to put in, which stones to leave out. I'm even going to measure this one and see if, it's, if this one is appropriate. Could be. But now I just got to test out and see which ones work. You may actually end up making more stones 
uh, to fill in areas. And then we also have a fence to put in. Okay, I have a towel down right now, so my project is nice and stable. And I have my protector sheet down to use my hot glue gun. I'm going to be choosing a couple of the tombstones today. I really want to put this large one in here, so I'm going to be starting off with that one. Once you put them in with the hot glue gun, just remember it becomes permanent. So if you have to break it off, it's going to become kind of a mess. But that's the part of prop making that you just have to get into. So let's start building that today. Also, I wanted to show you that we had done the parts of the fence. We may, to, we may need to use heat to bend the fencing in angles if we want to have a circular piece that down here. So let's see how this is going to work out. So I'm going to start putting my first tombstone in here. I'm going to apply a very generous amount of hot glue came out amazing I actually have an extra tree over here just in case we want to add some bush and some shrubbery to our cemetery and I also have a little bit of extra flocking over here so we can add to any place that if you can see very carefully where the hot glue was exposed check it out little pile of stones Right, and then down here, we got to add some more flocking to cover up our yellow. So, right now, let's start doing the fixing on our products. I'm going to be putting the fence on today, and I'm going to be using several different type of tweezers uh, to help me put that on. I'm using the straight nose here and the fine L. But um, there's still some work to be done on this, but once you get the the fencing on then later on you can place a lot of the bush material on there I've got my glue gun heated up here and we're going to very carefully put a little drop of glue there and there bingo now we want the fence to stay on the wood. Okay, and now we're going to be doing some other fine work here. We're using this one today. Making sure I got the right top. not very easy okay turn this a bit into the other side and make sure you got the right top and the bottom on there very important For a second looking good okay I'm gonna complete that fence around the back of that we want the front of this to be open there fence came out really nice it went around in a very hexagon shape I'd like the front part to be open I'm gonna be using more of this second tree I'll be cutting this off with a sharp pair of scissors using my really fine pair of tweezers going in there and creating some bushes and then I'll finish that off by adding some more flocking to the front of here to cover this over and let's see what that looks like there we have the final product very very nicely 